Short industrial trucks are rugged tools that are used to push, pull, carry, lift, and stack materials. This category of machines includes the tractors that pull luggage carts at airports, the all-terrain reach trucks on construction sites, and of course, forklifts. All of these vehicles save us effort, time, and money. But if they aren't used correctly or maintained properly, they can be dangerous. To help us use these machines safely, OSHA created the Powered Industrial Truck Standard. One of the most significant parts of this regulation deals with training. Before you can use any type of powered industrial truck, OSHA requires that you be fully trained, evaluated, and certified by a competent instructor. Your certification process will include instruction on safety procedures and training on how to operate the industrial trucks that you'll be using. You will also have supervised driving practice. Your knowledge and ability will be reevaluated at least once every three years. At this time, you will also receive any retraining that may be necessary. Additionally, OSHA requires retraining any time you are observed being unsafe, have a close call, or are involved in an accident. Retraining is also required whenever there is a change in your workplace that may affect your ability to operate your truck safely. To help you choose the industrial truck that is right for your job, OSHA has separated them into seven classes. Classes one through five are forklifts and other lift trucks. These machines often have massive counterbalance weights that allow them to lift very heavy loads. Class one trucks are counterbalanced forklifts that are powered by electric motors. Since these machines don't produce exhaust gas, they are a good choice for use inside warehouses and other buildings. Class 2 trucks are narrow aisle lift trucks and order pickers. Some of these machines actually raise their operators to where they can easily reach the materials thereafter. So fall protection must be worn by workers who are using this equipment. Class 3 vehicles are electric powered hand trucks, such as pallet jacks that operators either walk behind or lead. Even though you don't drive these machines, you must still be properly trained before you use them. Classes 4 and 5 are counterbalanced forklifts that are powered by gasoline, diesel, or propane. Class 4 forklifts are outfitted with solid rubber tires. As a result, they can only be used on paved surfaces. Class 5 forklifts, on the other hand, have pneumatic tires, which allows them to drive on unpaved surfaces as well. In addition to these classes of general industry lift trucks, OSHA classifies two more types of vehicles as powered industrial trucks. Class 6 trucks are tractor-like machines, such as the vehicles that pull luggage carts at airports. Since these don't lift loads, they are not counterbalanced. This makes them lighter and somewhat easier to drive. Class 7 trucks are counterbalanced rough terrain lift trucks. Unlike other lift trucks, Class 7 machines have booms that allow them to pick up and place materials in difficult to reach locations. Additional training is required to operate these trucks safely. While each type of powered industrial truck has its own characteristics, there are some general rules to follow when using any of them. Let's start with an essential safety rule that's really just common sense. When maintaining or operating any type of powered equipment, keep track of where you're putting your body parts. Never place your feet, hands, or fingers where they could be crushed or amputated. The next thing to remember is that you should inspect your truck every day. Begin your shift by giving it a good once-over. If you're operating a truck that's used around the clock, don't assume the next driver will catch problems with a truck that developed while you were using it. So inspect it at the end of your shift as well. 
That way you won't leave any dangerous surprises for your co-workers. If you find something wrong, take the key out of the ignition and put a sign on the vehicle that identifies it as out of service. Then inform your supervisor of the problem. Create a checklist for your inspection. Start with the exterior. Make sure moving parts operate correctly and safety guards are not bent or broken. The air pressure in pneumatic tires must be kept up to spec. Solid tires should not have any gashes or embedded debris. Verify that the steering is not too tight or too loose and that warning lights, backup alarms and horns are all working. Make sure that the brakes feel firm and stop the truck effectively. Check the hydraulics and the oil level. Examine batteries for leaks and corrosion. Make sure that their cable connections are tight. On electrically powered trucks, test the battery's electrolyte level. Remember to wear personal protective equipment as you do it. Eye protection, face shields, and rubber gloves are mandatory whenever you work with battery acid. Industrial trucks with internal combustion or IC engines run on propane, gasoline, or diesel fuels. These models require yearly emission tests similar to the ones performed on automobiles. You should verify that IC-powered vehicles have passed this test before you use them. IC-powered industrial trucks also require other checks that are similar to those that you perform on your car, including transmission fluid, motor oil, and coolant levels. Look at these every time you refuel your truck. Only recharge and refuel your truck in designated no smoking areas away from flames, sparks, and electric arcs. This holds true for even electrically powered trucks because their batteries can give off highly flammable hydrogen gas. Before recharging an electrically powered truck, raise the hood. You should leave it open until the battery is finished charging. This will reduce the chances of an explosion by allowing any hydrogen gas that is generated during the charging process to disperse. Leave the charger off until you have connected it to the battery so that you don't generate any sparks. Take the charger's plug and connect it to the battery plug that you disconnected from the truck itself. Remember, you have to connect the charger to the battery for recharging to occur. While it's possible to plug the charger directly into the truck, where the battery plug usually goes, don't do it. It's an expensive mistake that can blow the truck circuits. Once the cables are properly connected, you can turn the charger on. Once the battery is charged, turn the charger off before you disconnect the cables. Then make sure that the hood is securely repositioned and locked. This will keep the battery from coming out of its compartment if the truck ever tips over. When refueling a propane-powered industrial truck, first shut off the valve to the fuel tank. Let the engine run until it stalls, then turn it off. This uses up any unburnt propane in the system. Next, unscrew the gas line from the tank and roll the tank off the truck. Position the new tank by aligning it with the tank locating pin. This puts the fuel pickup tube inside the tank at the best angle to withdraw the propane. Secure the tank in place and tighten the fuel line and open the valve. Once your vehicle has been fueled, you're ready to roll. Whenever you're operating a powered industrial truck, you need to follow safe operating procedures. Begin by entering the vehicle properly. Use a three-point mount. Make sure that you have at least two hands and one foot, or two feet and one hand, in contact with the truck at all times. This will help to keep you from slipping. Before you drive off, buckle up and adjust your seatbelt. While you're moving, keep your hands inside the vehicle. Watch where you're going and stay alert for hazards. When you're driving your forklift, keep the forks low, four to six inches from the floor. Raised forks can damage equipment and injure coworkers. Maintain safe speeds to avoid accidents. Don't stop abruptly when you're carrying a load. The sudden jolt could cause it to fall or slide off the forks. 
drive to the right of oncoming traffic and pedestrians, just as you would in a car. Don't tailgate. Stay at least three truck lengths behind other vehicles. Stop and sound your horn at corners and doorways to let other drivers or anyone on foot know you're there. Look both ways before you pull out. Make sure to maintain a clear view of where you're going. If you're moving a load that blocks your forward vision, drive in reverse. Use a spotter to help you if necessary. Drive carefully and never fool around while operating an industrial truck. The driver's seat is no place for a joker or a show-off. And never allow riders on an industrial truck unless it is specifically designed for transporting passengers. There are basic procedures that should be followed in specific operating environments as well. If you're working indoors with a truck that has an internal combustion engine, make sure there is plenty of ventilation to remove exhaust fumes. You can improve airflow by turning on fans and opening doors and windows. In areas where the atmosphere can't be made safe, use an electrically powered truck instead. Because industrial trucks can generate heat and sparks, they can be dangerous to use around flammable and explosive materials. To combat this, some trucks have safety features added to the exhaust, fuel and electrical systems that prevent them from igniting these substances. To help you determine which trucks are safe to use around various types of hazardous materials, OSHA has separated powered industrial trucks into 11 different categories. These designations are marked on the nameplates of each truck, along with information such as classification, weight, and lifting capacity. By referencing Table N1 in OSHA's Powered Industrial Truck Regulation, CFR 1910.178, you can see which trucks OSHA has approved for use around different types of materials. Talk to your supervisor if you have any questions. As you operate your industrial truck, you should also check the work area itself for potential hazards, such as limited aisle clearance and the distance to overhead pipes and ductwork. You don't want to get stuck or cause any damage. If you have to temporarily leave your vehicle, put the engine in neutral and set the parking brake. If you're on a forklift, lower the forks to the ground. This will help to keep it from moving. Whenever you will be more than 25 feet away or your vehicle will be out of your sight, shut the power off and take the key with you. When parking, make sure that you don't block stairwells, exits or fire hydrants. They may be needed in an emergency. Be sure to block your wheels when you're on a slope. Runaway industrial trucks are dangerous. If someone needs to talk to you when you're operating an industrial truck, don't let them come too close to the vehicle. Ask them to stand off at least three feet. Explain to them that the extra distance will keep them safe if something unexpected happens with the truck. Although all industrial trucks have similarities in how they're operated, forklifts have special handling requirements. One reason for this is the counterbalance weight in the back. This weight prevents the forklift from tipping forward when it raises a load and contributes to its tremendous lifting capacity. A loaded forklift is like a seesaw. The front wheels are the fulcrum upon which the machine is balanced. If a load is too heavy or too far from the wheels, the forklift is likely to tip forward. So you need to check your forklift's nameplate to see what its lifting capacity is. Always use a machine that is rated to handle the load that you want to move. If you're picking up a loaded pallet, space the forks widely apart to better balance the load. Keeping the forks level and a few inches off the ground, move forward slowly until the pallet is seated all the way back on the forks. Once the forks are fully inserted, Slowly lift the pallet about six inches. Then tilt the mast back to secure the load for transport. If you're lifting a pallet from an overhead rack, make sure that you lower the mast before traveling with the load. 
a forklift with a raised load is extremely unstable. If you try to drive with a load in this position, you're likely to tip over. Some loads may be naturally off-center. Be sure they're stabilized before moving them. Find the load center of gravity and position your truck's forks accordingly. Special attachments can be installed on the masts of forklifts to move barrels, carpet, and other hard-to-grasp objects. Since these attachments can radically change the lifting capacity of a forklift, a new nameplate with revised specifications will have been installed on the vehicle. Be sure you read the information on the plate before picking anything up. Forklifts can even be used to elevate workers, but only on proper safety platforms that are securely fastened to the mast. Never drive a forklift when someone is on the platform. Moving it even a few inches is dangerous because workers could fall or be crushed. When you're driving a forklift, you need to remember it's not as stable as a car. Most forklifts are supported only at three points. On three-wheeled machines, the first point is the rear wheel. On four-wheeled forklifts, it is at the center of the rear axle. The second and third points are the front wheels. These three points form what is called the stability triangle. Because a forklift is designed to handle loads, when it's not carrying anything, its center of gravity falls towards the back of the stability triangle, close to the first point of support at the rear. Since this is near two of the triangle's edges, it doesn't take much to make the forklift unstable. In fact, just running over a 2x4 can push the center of gravity outside the stability triangle, causing the forklift to tip. When you're lifting and carrying a load, a forklift center of gravity will shift towards the front and the second and third points of support, the front wheels. Since the center of gravity is now well away from the sides of the stability triangle, the forklift is generally more stable. But even a loaded forklift can have stability problems. A load that is too heavy can shift the center of gravity out of the stability triangle. This can make the forklift hard to control and cause it to tip forward. In a worst case scenario, you may even lose the load or damage the forklift. Another aspect of the stability triangle involves a forklift's vertical stability or line of action. This is an imaginary vertical line that runs through the forklift's center of gravity. As long as the line of action falls within the stability triangle, the forklift will be stable. There are factors, however, that can shift the line of action outside of the stability triangle and cause the forklift to tip. For example, Placing a load near the end of the forks can shift the center of gravity further forward than is safe. So you need to check your truck's nameplate for the proper load centers you should use to keep it stable. Raising a load too high when the forklift is stopped on an angled or uneven floor can shift the combined center of gravity out of the stability triangle on the downhill side. The same thing can happen when you drive with a raised load onto a surface that is angled, like a ramp, or one that is uneven and might cause the truck to shift its stance suddenly. Remember, any load will change a forklift's center of gravity. To stabilize a forklift when you're driving with a load, the best approach is to tilt the mast back and keep the forks low. If for any reason your forklift does begin to tip, don't jump out you could be crushed beneath the machine. Instead, brace your feet, grab onto the steering wheel and pull yourself tight up against it. Lean in the opposite direction from the way the vehicle is tipping. Don't try to get out of the forklift until it has come to a complete stop. There are several important things you need to remember about driving a powered industrial truck. Most forklifts and some other powered industrial trucks have rear wheel steering. So you need to be careful going around corners because the forks and the rear of the vehicle will both swing wide. Be especially cautious when you're on a loading dock 
so you don't go over the edge. Cross curbs and railroad tracks slowly and at an angle. This will keep at least two wheels in contact with the ground at all times and prevent the forklift from tipping over. You also need to pay special attention to slopes and ramps. When you're transporting a load, always keep the forks and the load uphill. This means you should back down a slope, otherwise you could lose the load. If you aren't carrying a load, the opposite is true. Always keep the forks pointed downhill to maintain the forklift's balance. This also gives you better control of the forklift, since it puts more of the weight on the front drive wheels where the brakes are located. Before driving on a ramp, clear away any obstacles that are in your path. Litter and liquid spills can cause a forklift to tip or skid. Check outdoor ramps for puddles and ice or snow. Be especially careful on steep inclines. Always watch your speed. Don't let the forklift accelerate if you're going down an incline. Never cross a slope at an angle, with or without a load. Driving across even a slight grade can cause a forklift to tip. Some lift trucks should be used only on flat surfaces. Consult your operator's manual or talk to your supervisor if you're not sure whether your truck is suited for the environment you're working in. Many of the ramps you'll encounter are made of concrete, which will be inherently stable. But if you are using a temporary ramp, like a metal bridge plate, make sure that it's securely positioned and can handle the weight of both the forklift and the load. Before you drive onto a rail car, truck, or trailer, set its brakes and block its wheels, so that it won't shift under the added weight of the forklift. Check the strength of the floors as well. Don't forget to look for indentations and holes that could cause your forklift to tip. You need to know the proper procedures for unloading your forklift once you have reached your destination as well. If you're dropping your load on the floor, drive straight ahead until the load is a few inches short of the drop-off point. Then tilt the mast forward so the forks are parallel to the floor and the load is directly over where you want it to land. Gradually lower the forks until the load is in place and the forks move freely. When you back away, do it slowly. Don't drag the forks across the floor. Pallets are also often placed in racks or stacked to save space. Ask your supervisor how high you can safely stack the loads you'll be handling. And whenever you're loading, unloading, or stacking, make sure that other workers and pedestrians are a safe distance away. You never know when a load might slip. Powered industrial trucks are valuable tools that give us the strength to handle heavy loads. But following good work practices are key to operating them safely. When trucks are used incorrectly or aren't properly maintained, they can become very dangerous. Let's review. Before using an industrial truck, read the operator's manual. If you still have questions, refer to OSHA's Powered Industrial Truck Standard 29 CFR 1910.178 for proper operating procedures. Examine your work environment and choose the type of truck that's right for the jobs you'll be doing. Inspect your truck thoroughly before you use it. Pay attention to your truck's weight capacity and its stability triangle. Stay alert, drive safely, and always make sure that other workers are a safe distance away whenever you are operating your truck. Powered industrial trucks are formidable machines that can be dangerous, but by using common sense and following correct operating procedures, you can harness their strength and get them to work for you safely.